Hello and welcome to another Windows 7 tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how to customize Windows 7. So the first thing you want to do is right click on an open area of your desktop and go to personalize. Now there's variable factors that we can change. We can change the desktop background, we can change the windows color, the glass effects, and we can change the sounds and we can also change screen savers. Now Windows 7 does actually come preloaded with a variety of themes the aero themes which gives rise to this glass effect that you see on the taskbar in any of your windows and it comes with the basic windows themes which don't have any of that glass effect or any of those nice looking features that windows 7 is known for so we most likely won't be using those so if you want to choose any of these themes all you have to do is just click on them simple as that and as you notice there was a sound there the sound indicates what type of sounds, uh, the custom sounds that they're using. As you can see, the sounds have actually changed to cityscape. If I click on characters, it will click onto characters. If I click onto landscape, etc. Now each of these themes have their own custom backgrounds to match the theme. So as you can see, Windows 7, this one's architecture, so it will be pictures of buildings, etc. Landscapes, nice beautiful sceneries. United States would just be the country pictures. Uh, United Kingdom, country pictures, scenes, just random pictures of nature, just pictures of nature, etc. Okay, so let's create our own theme. Let's click on desktop background. And as you can see, the pictures that are listed here are actually the same pictures that were shown in the themes on the previous page. So we don't want to use these pictures, we want to use our own library of pictures. So we're just going to click on browse and then we're just going to navigate to our pictures folder which is where we've kept ours obviously you can use uh, any directory where you have your pictures stored and I've actually labeled my theme wallpapers just to make it easier and then click OK so these are currently the pictures that I have in that folder and what they are set to at the moment is actually to change the picture every 30 minutes so if I change that to every 10 seconds you'll notice that the picture actually will change in 10 seconds so it cycles through each of my pictures however many pictures I have it will, it will cycle through them I can also shuffle them so they'll appear randomly rather than um, in this chronological order now let's say some of these pictures were small or not to the correct resolution as previous windows would allow you can actually um, state whether you want to fill the screen with the picture or if you want to tile it if it's quite a small resolution picture you can stretch it if it's just a bit shy uh, or if it's too big then you can fit it and as you can see uh, while I'm talking every 10 seconds the picture in the background is actually changing so it's quite a nice little effect that you can do so we'll change that to about one minute because that's a bit more reasonable and we'll say save changes okay so now that we have the desktop background sorted we're gonna change the color of the arrow theme that we have going on here so let's go to window color now, as you can see, they give you a range of palette colors that you can choose from. So let's go for a blue. As you can see, it changes to a blue, obviously. A green, a red, a pinky color, purple, brown, gray, and the last one, frost. Now, personally, because we actually have varying uh, colors on our backgrounds, we've got the tiger, we've got the picture of Orion's Nebula, we've got uh, a random street going across, so we've got a bit of blacks, we've got a bit of oranges, we've got a bit of purples in there. It kind of makes sense to have a generalized and or an open color um, for our taskbar just to keep things a bit more uh, sleek um, so what we'll do is we'll go for frost and we'll take it down to the left of the spectrum which will decrease the color intensity and obviously the color of frost uh, would actually be white uh, but obviously as you move to the right hand side um, so the color intensity is, is maximized um, it becomes quite opaque so we want to change that and become more transparent. I can get the same effect if I did it for another color. So if I went towards more to the red spectrum or if I go to the other side, it doesn't matter which color you choose, you can still get the same effect. Now it also allows us to customize it further by going to showing the color mixer. And if we had a color, for example, red, we can actually adjust the hue. So this would actually change the color itself. So we can actually um, maximize the, the, the exact color that we want if we have a background that we really want. Uh, in our case, it doesn't matter where we put this one because we're gonna, gonna get rid of the color anyway. The saturation will obviously bring out the, uh, the deeper colors of that color. So uh, here's a lighter green, then we can go for a darker green, but we wanna bring that all the way down. 
and the brightness will just um, obviously it's just the brightness of the bar so we're going to put that all the way down and again if we pull the color temp intensity back uh, as you can see it makes a glass look so we'll save those changes so the next thing that we can actually tweak is the sounds of windows so the sounds are basically the sounds that you hear when you log into windows when you log out uh, when you plug in or out a USB etc etc so let's navigate to the sounds and as you can see what we've got here is a different sound scheme so if you click on this you get a drop down menu of many different types of sound schemes so for example if I click on afternoon and I'll just give you an example of explanation so that's the sound of if an error message came up it's like whoa what's going on there um, we've got calligraphy garden etc etc yada yada got some funky stuff going on there got a full orchestra over there so we'll just keep it on Windows default because that's fine for us so we'll click OK okay so the next thing we can do is change the screensaver so just navigate to that and as you can see you can choose from any of these options here uh, so for example the bog standard 3d text that we used to have um, you can actually change in the settings what you want written there uh, for example and you can obviously specify how long you want uh, the computer to wait before it puts it on. Uh, you can also resume, um, when, when you do actually resume the computer, it will display the log on screen. So if you have a password set up, um, as we explained in the previous tutorials um, on the UAC and account management, when you move the mouse and come uh, out of the screensaver, it will basically go to your log on screen. And if you have a password, obviously, then you have to enter your password. So it's a good security feature that way. Okay, so we're just going to click on none because we don't actually need one and we're just going to click apply and we're going to click OK. We actually have our theme set up now. The best thing to do is obviously to save the theme just in case anything goes wrong. So let's save the theme now and we'll just call it Ecta theme. Ecta theme and click save. So that's it. So that's how we save the theme and that's pretty much it. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the videos. Uh, we'll have plenty more tutorials coming up and don't forget if you need um, any tutorials done then just please leave a comment below or if this helped you please leave a comment below that would be great and also don't forget to check out our website at ectotech.co.uk forward slash blog it's in the links below uh, thank you very much and until next time goodbye